Station and the road building, for example. Is that you have any question for these things? No? Yes? No? So what is important at the end of the day is that networks are important because they represent, they are a way to represent the structure of the system. And structural properties influence the robustness of a lot of systems. And not only that, they influence how we can spread this, how, how we can spread information and how we can spread diseases as well. Okay. And information might be very important when we start making decisions. So as I said before, how we change mental models. One way is to try to market those people that have the highest authority or the highest likelihood to change other people and they are well connected. Because if we change, if we, if we target individuals that are not very connected, even if they have the higher authority, we might not have that amount of change that we need. And this is another way we can actually exploit these type of crops or these type of techniques. And I think now Ingrid is going to give an example of fisheries. And So what um, I did is I um, used some network analysis to analyse a quota market, basically. Now, we talked about quota in the last couple of days, and quota is basically um, if a fishery has a total allowable catch, so they say you can only catch a thousand tonnes of fish can be taken out of that fishery per year. What quota, or, or trade or quota basically does, it, it, it says, okay, We've got 100 fishermen in this fishery. Um, we'll give everyone a right to fish some of that quota. So say, for instance, you've been fishing in this fishery for 20 years, and on average over those 20 years, you've caught five tonnes per year. We'll give you a right for, to catch five tonnes per year in that fishery. You've been fishing for about 30 years, and you've caught 30 tonnes. We'll give you a right to catch 30 tonnes next year. That is if the, if the the total allowable catch of that fishery stays the same. If the total allowable catch goes down, your quota will be reduced proportionally. So say there's a 10% reduction in the total allowable catch, your quota will be, rather than five tonnes, it will become um, four and a half tonnes, or whatever the equivalent reduction is in the <coughs> So that's what a trade quota means. It basically means that you have a property right to catch fish, and you can you can, it's your right, you can sell it. So say you're new to the fishery and you want to buy my five tons of um, that loading quota, I can sell it to you and it has a market price. The other thing I can do if I hold quota is I can lease it to you. I can hold on to the property right, but you want to go fishing, you need an extra five tons. So I say, okay, I, I will lease out my quota to you for $20 a kilo. So you have both the market for a trade quota and a market for these. So what I did in this fishery is, and the tradable quota is one of those management approaches that economists have thought up because it's it's really nice because you have a market, right? And the market sorts itself out. So it's a nice way to manage a fishery. Um, and but, so economically it works. That there's increased efficiency in the way that they catch, but there's quite a number of papers that um, point out that the social outcomes of the outcomes of um, tradable quota are, are being questioned to some degree. So there's positives and negatives. Can I just ask if the cost of the quota or the value of the quota is it fixed or just each individual property owner um, put the price on it? It happens in the market. Okay. So depending on what you're willing to pay to buy my 10 tons, that's the price. If you get cheaper for someone else, you go get someone else. So it's just a market experience. Like any, like buying and selling. Land, basically. Yeah. So in Tasmania, it's <coughs> a rock lobster fishery. It's 80% of it's exported. It's a, quite a, it's one of the most annual fisheries in Tasmania. In, in 1998, I believe, the quota was introduced. And, and so everyone, and there's a bit of a, an issue, an ethical issue in, in allocating quota because um, when you actually say, well, you get five tons, you get 10 tons, you get 30 tons, there's obviously some debate about the, the fairness of that, and there's lots of papers written about that. So, so what happens um, in this fishery that is <coughs> introduced, and 
a year after quota introduction, um, we had some data about the trade in this quota. So this is the, the trade where I hold on to my property right, but I give you the right to fish my fish at cost. So what this one here, just focusing on the left hand side of this graph here shows, is that a year after quota introduction, there was trade between, these are fishermen, and there was trade between them for this quota. So these guys down here, they don't trade, they're not part of the trade network, right? They're, they're, just, they're just fishing they're the things that they own. These guys are just fishing between the two of them, and this, these guys are part of the network. Um, the size of the dock is the amount of quota they own, that's what it shows, and the edge, or the line between them shows that there's been a trade between them. So what this shows is that we, we, we had uh, data for um, every year up to 2007 at that stage, and we looked at how that network of trade of quota changed over time, and this was the network in 2007, eight years after quota was introduced, or um, trade of quota was introduced in the fishery. So you can see here that there's far fewer fishermen that are actually just fishing, they're not trading. This guy here has obviously bought some quota from someone because he's increased in size. There's many more fishermen that are now part of this trade network, so they've started trading their quota. And in fact, when you do the statistics on it, what Yakupo was saying before about um, scale-free networks, where 20% of the fishermen own 80% of the quota, that would be a scale-free network where 20% the same with, with anything in economics. 20% of the people have 80% of the wealth, right? That's a free type of principle. So in this network here, what we're seeing is there's concentration of quota ownership. So people are increasingly, um, some of the guys are growing bigger than the other guys are growing smaller. So that's one of the things we can observe. But just to go a little bit deeper into that, if we, if we break it down a bit, we actually found that there's different types of fishermen within that, um, within the Tasmanian fishery. So we have people who own quota that don't actually fish, so we call them investors. So these guys sell their quota, or at least their quota, to other fishermen, which is those heroes there. So these guys here are what we call least dependent quota uh, fishermen. So they tend, they depend on, they own very little quota, and they depend on getting their least quota from other people. These guys here, they get quota from investors, but they redistribute some. These guys here, they fish, but they actually lease out some of their quota, so they might be topping up their income a little, a little bit. These guys don't fish. So this is your least quota network, and this is your active fishermen. Right? Does that, that make sense? That's just the description of the system. So what's actually been happening in Tasmania, which we can deduct from partly the shape of the network and partly what I'm showing you here, is that if you plot fishing effort, which is the amount they catch, the actual amount, so it might be 100 tonnes a year, or 75 tonnes a year, and the amount they own, so obviously the guys on the, on the vertical there are the guys that just fish, right? They own as much as they can. <coughs> These guys down here, they fish more than they own, so they're dependent on getting quota leased in. These guys down here above the diagonal are um, people that um, fish, but they leave some of it out. And then we have the quota, uh, the income supplements who actually leave some of their quota out from, sorry, the redistributors, I should say. So what's been happening over time is that we've gained a lot of people who are depending on these quota to go We've lost a lot of these guys who just go fishing, who just own quota and fish all their quota. We've um, gained a lot of their business, so people who actually who own quota are now leasing it all out, they're not going fishing anymore. And these people, these, um, the people who depend on leasing quota to go fishing, are actually fishing a lot harder, so they're actually catching more. The fishing effort has increased, and that's partly driven probably by the fact that it's um, a, a lease quota is a variable cost, so it takes away from your profit. So you have to probably to cover your, your costs, you have to fish harder if you're if you're leasing quota in. And the other thing is that's happening is that 
obviously there's an increased uh, number of portfolio investors. So this is just an example of showing you that the, the shape of a network can tell us, okay, there's something happening in this fishery. There's some we're, we're getting a uh, the shape of that network is a is increasingly a scale-free network. So we have some sort of thing happening here, which means which indicates a concentration of ownership. And then we can break it further down and actually look at okay, so who is actually how is that concentration of ownership actually happening by the typology that we can create for the fishermen who are um, who are dependent on these climate. So this was just a little study based on looking at the effects of, of uh, policy um, change by allocating property rights to particular <coughs> fishery. And this is not this is not something that's unique to Tasmania. You can appreciate you probably more aware of the, <laughs> the stuff that's happening in North America than yeah. 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 Well, if, uh, so at the moment, at the time this study was done, what proportion of the total quota is being held by the investors? Do you know? In this particular In this one, not fishery. Um, I don't know off the top of my head, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Because that's an important one of the reasons people don't like the quota trade and the quota system. The, the idea of having absentee fishes, right? And, and that kind of thing. So it would be nice to know that one. Yeah. And I'll, I'll find out when I get the time. But yeah. So this is this this sort of um, trend towards concentration of ownership is, is something that's almost if we go back to that the last talk the last couple of talks about um, the things that you can explain in economics, that behaviour of concentrated ownership mm -hmm. is something that we can predict in a way, because yeah. On the other side, as you were saying yesterday, the, like the redistribution of wealth yeah. is one of the things that could bring sustainability. Mm -hmm. So this is really a game against this going towards sustainability. In a way, because you talked about increasing fish in the but they still have to catch the quota. They cannot catch more than their quota. Right? No. Is that the least fish? Yeah, food. because you, you talk about fishing effort increasing. Yeah. The they can't. So they yeah. what's been happening is that um, like <coughs> if you used to catch say twenty units of quota, mm -hmm. if you if you now are depending on on leasing quota, in, you might have to fish four <coughs> units of quota to make it worth your while to stay in the fishery. If you're a lease fisherman, so there's the efficiency gains really because you're getting bigger and you're getting more efficient at catching and fish. And then that goes to that question. Yeah. Uh, the fish then suffers, right, in terms of sustainability. Well, there's a total allowable catch. Uh, there's a seed. It says that there's a cap on the total amount that can be taken out of that fishery. So the, so the quota really doesn't achieve sustainability in itself or by itself. You have to, it's the total allowable catch. That is what is the what the, what's the safeguard for the biological system of the fishery. Because it, it basically limits the number of fish that are allowed to be taken. It's just the distribution among the fishermen that is guided by the biological system. So in the plant, you said they they're transferable. Yeah. So from what I understand, the DQ actually
but in, in fisheries, in a way, that one of the things that they were, that in the literature you'll find is that, okay, you give someone a property right, they look after the